This is the weekly sales meeting for July 14th, 2024. My name is Chris Fleming. You can reach me at chris at cdmediaconsulting.com or go to our website at cdmediaconsulting.com. Today's topic, always show the Rolex. Rolex is a renowned Swiss luxury watchmaker. The irony may be that it was founded in London, England in 1905 by Hans Wilsdorf and Alfred Davis. There it was known as Wilsdorf and Davis. They specialized in importing Swiss movements. They placed them in quality watch cases. In 1908, Wilsdorf registered the trademark Rolex. From there, the brand began to gain recognition for its precision and reliability. A significant milestone in Rolex's history came in 1910. It was the first wristwatch in the world to receive the Swiss Certificate of Chronometric Precision. This was awarded by the official Watch Rating Center. It marked the beginning of Rolex's reputation for precision timekeeping. Another pivotal moment came in 1926. It was the introduction of the Oyster Case. This was the first waterproof and dustproof watch case in the world. This innovation revolutionized the watch industry. It laid the foundation for Rolex's reputation for durability and reliability. Throughout the 20th century, Rolex continued to innovate. It introduced iconic models such as the Submariner in 1953. This was the first watch designed for diving professionals. In 1956, it introduced the Day Date. This was the first wristwatch to display both date and the day of the week spelled out in full. Rolex has also played a significant role in exploration and adventure. The brand's watches accompanied many expeditions, the most famous being Sir Edmund Hillary and Tenzing Norgay's ascent to Mount Everest in 1953. During the climb, Hillary wore a Rolex Oyster Perpetual. The association further cemented Rolex's status as a symbol of prestige and success. In the modern day, Rolex continues to be one of the most prestigious and influential luxury watch brands in the world. Rolex is known for its exceptional craftsmanship, innovation, and timeless design. Rolex maintains a deliberate strategy of exclusivity. It does so by limiting the production of its watches. It carefully controls distribution. This scarcity contributes to the perception of Rolex watches as desirable luxury items. It further enhances their prestige. Rolex's combination of heritage, craftsmanship, and innovation makes them admired and sought after. Their association with achievement and exclusivity established it as a symbol of prestige and luxury. And there's a reason they have never had a sale in the history of the company. Rolex as a brand generally does not take part in traditional sales events. It does not discount its products. This practice is in line with its strategy of maintaining exclusivity. It upholds the perceived value of its watches. Instead of offering discounts, Rolex focuses on providing exceptional craftsmanship. They focus the brand on quality. They deliver exceptional customer service. This is what justifies its premium pricing. Rolex watches do not typically go on sale through authorized dealers. They never go on sale directly from the company. But there are instances where pre-owned Rolex watches may be available at sale prices. In these cases, the price reduction is often due to factors such as age, condition, or rarity. It remains a symbol of top value and luxury in the watch market and, and an example to use to hold fast to the best products in your line. My father runs a retail store and has for 50 plus years. My father and his father and his brother were all partners in the same retail store. It is the place where many of my now infamous lines were first uttered. My grandfather was a funny guy during general conversation, but if you had told him to go out and be funny, he would not have done very well. My father runs the place now. He's almost 80 and he still goes to work every day. He believes the place might fall apart without him. Truth be told, he might fall apart still going to work every day, but that's a story for another day. I worked there as a teenager and throughout my college years. One thing I learned aside from how to sell is that sellers will rarely venture outside the comfort zone of their frame of reference. They tend to base everything on what they deem valuable. Their price consciousness is based on their idea of what things cost. The value proposition is viewed through their lens, not the customer's. You see, my father had one weak seller. It didn't make this person a bad human being. This seller was miscast for the role in question. This person had a glass ceiling that could not be penetrated. That glass ceiling was based on that person's socioeconomic condition. If a product was perceived to be too expensive for the seller personally, then it never saw the light of day. Anyone who observed this person in action for any extended period would see the pricing default. Even if the customer wanted to see something better, fear would take over and the sale remained on the low side, while another seller would have taken that same customer to a better product with a higher threshold.
That seller's economic status set a threshold of success that was only based on small orders. That was their comfort zone. Their perception of value was clouded by personal bias. Many professional sellers take this conventional wisdom to work every day. They don't understand the true value of their product. They apply their personal metrics to their perception of value, rather than assess the customer's situation, and apply the best solution possible. Sellers will get alligator arms on pricing because they cannot see the true value of the offer. Offer. It is beyond their comfort zone or threshold, so it gets dismissed. But the customer is there with a problem. As a seller, you can provide a solution. You can set the threshold of perception by what you say next. What does it hurt to trot out the best of what you have to offer? What do you have to lose if you show someone the best thing in your arsenal? The answer is nothing. From that early retail experience, I determined that I would always show the Rolex, and that is regardless of the customer. Show them the best, if for nothing else but determining the frame of reference. For some, the Rolex will be a status symbol. Others might deem it too expensive, but for everyone, it displays real value, and you can have a real conversation about needs and solve problems. It also avoids convenience conventional wisdom. It shows respect to all of your customers, not just some of them, but it is starting with the best of what you have to offer. This works to level the playing field. It also sets expectations. Automobile sellers and jewelry sellers are the best at this. They will show everyone whom they can talk to the best, the top end, the shiny, and the sparkly. No one is ever insulted by seeing the best of what you have. They may be insulted if they later found out you had the best and didn't show it to them. It also opens the conversation to everything on the table. Media sellers, for some reason or another, have an inferiority complex about what we sell. We are like that seller who worked for my father. We impose our own socioeconomic ceiling. We don't want to show the best and most expensive product we have. We are somehow intimidated by our offering. We then apply our own socioeconomic ceiling to the process. We leave the Bentley in the barn. I have never understood why. It could be that conventional wisdom says we don't want to scare away the prospect too soon, as if it were a fishing expedition, and we should take the little nibbles as they come. It could be we are thinking small in general. This small thinking is based on our socioeconomic condition. It could be an ask big, miss big, ask small, miss small mentality. If we ask for low dollar amounts, we won't scare the customer too soon and they will do business with us. Then we can grow the customer on the next sale. But that next sale at a higher level never comes. That is the point. Whatever you establish as the value proposition on the first sale becomes the value of your product to the customer. What you establish as the value proposition on the first sale is the value. You rarely grow the customer beyond that point. That number becomes a permanent fixture in every future conversation. Whatever it is, we need to stop it and stop it now. With every conversation, we are framing our customer relationship. We do it every time we make an ask. The size of the last ask is the value your customer will place on the business relationship. You must not only maintain a high value proposition for your product, but maintain it for yourself. You need to ask the right questions to determine who and what you are dealing with and to determine what their economic condition is. For instance, if you are calling on a car dealer, you may find out that the car dealer spends more a month on coffee than you are asking for. If that is the case, do you think you will get the time of day? You must be in the right frame for the conversation. One of my favorite questions to ask potential sellers in a job interview is asking for how much money makes you uncomfortable. What I want to know is what the threshold of pain is, and I want to know where the height of the self-imposed ceiling is. If that answer is below the monthly order average on any of our products, that person doesn't work for us, ever. I will encourage them to try another line of work. Before I manage teams, I can think of many sellers where I worked who had this same problem. There's no telling the amount of business they cost these companies by undervaluing the product, and they did so based on their own perceptions. Someone once told me you work as hard in Los Angeles or New York as you do in Kirksville, Ottumwa. The difference is the orders have more zeros. This means you're going to do as much work for the $200 order as the $20,000 order. If that is the case, shouldn't you ask for the big one? After all, you're already there. Some years ago, I took over a heritage operation. This office had a seasoned sales staff. The irony of this seasoned staff was that the top biller was the worst at this. This person also had a self-imposed ceiling. My top biller couldn't understand my desire to charge more for our product. 
The seller couldn't understand why we wanted our customers to get used to spending more to achieve success. This veteran seller had become accustomed to selling low dollar offers, and this seller was giving away our precious inventory. Prior poor training had created a mentality of any order is a good order. I went as far as to publicly execute a low dollar order in a sales meeting to prove a point. This was not enough to change the mindset. This was a long term flawed seller. The status as the top biller was achieved through longevity and attrition combined with one big account. In this instance, I made the mistake of thinking the seller could change. They were incapable of making that shift. I kept that seller way too long. Truth be told, I should have shown this person the door very early on. And I should have done it as soon as I spotted this flaw. As the adage goes, if you think you have a problem, you're right. In this case, I was right, and I continue to have a problem. Don't fall victim to conventional wisdom. Change your bad habits if you have them. Don't self-impose imaginary thresholds that only make sense in your mind. Treat all of your prospects and customers with the respect they deserve. Dust off the Rolex from the back and polish it up. Make sure you take the Bentley out for a spin with every customer. Believe me, you will not insult anyone by thinking they are the best and thinking they deserve to see the best. It will set an infinite ceiling of possibilities for your business relationship and you will stop leaving money on the table. Make it a new rule, a new mantra. Always show the Rolex. My new book, 21st Century Sales Success, is now available on Amazon.com. If you like what you have heard here today, please consider ordering a copy or two. You can always send one to a friend. Go to cdmediaconsulting.com right now and follow the instructions to order.